Hello, welcome to this lesson on molarity. The question of the day, why is it important to report solution concentration and consider the number of moles of solute? In case you missed the last lesson on ways to quantify concentration of solutions, molarity is the fourth one that I delivered and probably the most common. It is the number of moles of solute divided by the number of liters of solution. And molarity is always going to be um, expressed as a decimal, never as a fraction. The units for molarity are moles divided by liters. We often will just say that moles per liter. And we will also call that molar represented by a capital M. So our um, equation is here. We would have the moles of solute, moles divided by liters of solution, meaning that anytime you have a solution's volume that is not in liters, you will have to convert it. And anytime you have a solute in grams, you will have to do a QMT chart and convert it into moles. I will link the full video to the gram and mole conversions in this video's description, but just a quick rundown. Anytime you are given grams, you'll have to convert that to moles. I like to teach the ratio method. You would take your given number of grams and set it to X number of moles. So let's say it's 10 grams of sodium chloride. You would have 10 grams of sodium chloride is equal to an unknown number of moles. You would do a QMT chart, which is quantity mass total, in order to get the molar mass for sodium chloride, I believe that's 58 grams per mole, and you would set that equal to one mole. In order to solve this, you would cross multiply and solve for X. I will also link this video in the description um, on converting metric units, but anytime you are given milliliters, you will have to convert that back to liters. So you would move the decimal on your measurement three times to the left in order to get from milliliters to liters. In a balanced chemical equation, coefficients represent moles, which is why we are going to use molarity for setting up chemical reactions. We have this little blurb here from a lab experiment that says add 50 milliliters of hydrochloric acid to the reaction vessel. The problem with this statement is that 50 milliliters of hydrochloric acid doesn't actually tell you if this is a dilute version of hydrochloric acid or a very concentrated version of it, which is why we will have to use molarity um, to help describe this solution. The other problem with that statement is that we're often measuring solutions and liquids in terms of their volume measurements, not mass. So we will use the molarity equation to help us make solutions with a certain number of grams dissolved in that solution. That's kind of where molarity comes from. So in this case, we are asked to make a 100 milliliter solution of a two molar NaCl. So to make a solution with a particular molarity or concentration, you have to determine the number of moles of solute that you're going to need to add to the water. You have to know like how much stuff is really in there. Um, so we're going to use our molarity equation. M is, or the molarity is equal to moles of solute divided by liters of solution. We know that we want this to be a two molar solution and we only want 100 milliliters of it. We don't want to make a bunch of it. Um, we don't want any excess. So I'm going to take that 100 milliliters, move the decimal three times, and that gives me 0.100 liters. Just for sig figs, we have those zeros there. Um, and then here we have X number of moles of NaCl. We're not sure how much. Uh, you can put this two molar over one, cross multiply, solve for the X, and you will get 0.2 moles of NaCl. But that's not good enough. We're then going to have to take that 0.2 moles of NaCl and convert it into grams so that we can actually make a lab measurement. So this 58.44 comes from the QMT chart, which if you missed it, I'll link that in the description as well. Um, the QMT chart is my process for finding the molar mass of a substance. Q stands for quantity, M is for mass, and T is for total. So you list all of your elements, count how many atoms there are, take their mass from the periodic table, find their totals, add them up. It's kind of a process. For sodium chloride, it's not all that necessary. Uh, you would just add the sodium and the chlorine. But either way, the molar mass of sodium chloride comes out to 58.44 grams. So you would cross multiply here, solve for the X, and X comes out to 11.69 grams of NaCl. Meaning that you are going to add those 58.44 grams of um, 
sodium chloride to a volumetric flask and you're going to add the solid to the bottom. Um, the solid goes in first. You would probably use a funnel on this volumetric flask because it has a very, very, very skinny neck. Um, and then you are going to fill the flask with water up into the line. And that is a delicate process. You have to do it nice and slow because if you overfill the line, the solution is no good. Now it's too dilute. Um, and there's only one measure measurement. So, or one graduation rather. So you don't really know like how much extra solution or how much extra water you've added. So you don't know how much it is diluted. So typically what happens is that we would like really quickly fill the bulb of this volumetric flask and then very slowly fill till we hit the meniscus, oftentimes using like a pipette to hit it exactly. The very skinny neck of the volumetric flask is designed so that you can get a really good reading on that meniscus. Um, down here, the meniscus is so wide, you won't be able to read it, but up in the neck, that's not a problem. So that's why we use a volumetric flask. And here you would pick literally a 100 milliliter volumetric flask. They only measure one volume, so they will only measure um, exactly what you need. This right here is a 100 milliliter volumetric flask, and you can see that it's, you know, like the size of my hand right here. Um, and then my graduation is right here. <laughs> it's just one. I don't think you can see it. There's just one graduation here, but they're, they're very small, but they do come in lots of different sizes. So you pick exactly the one that you need. That's molarity in a nutshell. It really comes down to these calculations. Uh, and then when we get into acid base, we will do a lot more with molarity. So it is important to make sure that your skills are really strong on your uh, cross multiplying and your molar mass calculations before moving on, because this skill comes up quite a bit and it is a huge lab skill. So please make sure that you feel confident in molarity. Watch the video again if you need to. Leave any questions in the comment section below the video. I would be happy to have them answered for you. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson and I'll see you there. Bye.